Join me right now is UFC featherweight prospect Kai Kamaka. Always good to have you on the show, man. How you doing? Doing good. Um, grateful, grateful for life, grateful for this journey that I'm on, and yeah, you know, thank the man above for sure. Now, the last time we talked, uh, you were talking about you're moving your family to Las Vegas. How has that transition been? It was good. I mean, the month of November, December was crazy just because, like, um, yeah, I was moving. I moved from Hawaii er, um, early November. I was supposed to fight late December or mid-December. And so I'm trying to move my family, not even thinking about fighting November 28th. And then th they nothing, they no opponent yet. So I'm like, frick. I'm trying to switch my mind, like, oh, maybe I'm just focused on moving my family. And as I'm about to do that, probably the day I'm going to do that or a day or two going into it, um, they call me about fighting Jonathan Pierce on a Friday, and, I'm, and it's, like, next week. And, I mean, I don't regret it. You know, that's a fighter's fight. And the only thing that happened is that um, I lost, you know. Um but that, I mean, the fight week itself felt normal. Just prior to the fight week, uh, my mind is just going, shipping my car, um, finding a place to rent, um, all that. Before, I didn't even have a place to rent yet. That's why my family wasn't here. Um, but everything that what felt normal was in a fight week. And, you know, take nothing away from Jonathan Pierce. Um, he did what he had to do. Um, he got me at the right time, you know, <laughs> right, right transition in, in my life. I mean, I, I would love to get that one back. Um, but yeah, props to him. Yeah, take us through the, the fight, man, and explain, like, what do you think went wrong, maybe tactically or maybe physically? I don't know. Um, it just was tactical. I mean, I, I, I won that first round, you know, and from there I thought, okay, this is how it's going to go. He's going to box me. And that was naive for me to think. You know, he's he's he has a wrestling mat on his chest. He's going to wrestle me. And, you know, I thought I was going to start picking him apart, which I, wa um, I was in that first round. And I thought um, just the inexperience in me at that point in my life, I I needed that. And maybe not a loss or whatever, whatever it is. But I felt like that was that was a blessing in disguise, you know, to see, to to be able to make adjustments, especially when you're winning, you know. Um, because the guy that's losing is going to make adjustments. Um, so it, it was tactical. I felt good going in. I mean, making weight, everything, everything went well. I just had a thousand things going on at that time in my life. And, um, he got me at the right time. You know, I, I was, I was a little bit immature that night. Was it easy for you to get over the loss or did it take some time or does it still linger with you right now? No, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it, it was tough loss just because, like, I haven't lost in years. And that was the only time I lost without an injury, you know, like a true injury. So I was like, I felt good. Um, he, he he beat me fair and square. So that was the, that was the only one that I, 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 I felt at peace with. Like, I mean, he beat me, you know, like everything was go good. We were evenly matched. Um, I mean... So I mean, I, it was it was it was tough pill to swallow just because I lost big stage, you know, and I thought I I thought I had him, thought it was a good fight, good matchup, and you know I just lost, and then it was for four weeks it did, so I kind of, I was the first time I actually took off, took off like of training immediately, um, especially MMA training. I got back in the gym, um, gym, uh, uh, um, back in the UFC PI, um. And then I just kind of rested for sparring a bit, you know, just to get that itch back. Because, um, I, I, I mean, you know, that's just part of it. You got to spar. Um, but, I mean, like like the like the man said, you got to save your chicken. So, um, I, I started doing that a little bit more just to get that itch back. And even, even now, a different approach in, in my camp. So, I mean, it, it was a good loss. It, I, I, it needed to come, and I'm glad it came already. You know, that type of loss. The end of 2020 was very hectic for you, man, because you were away from your family for a long time. But then after that, that last fight, you got to have your family in Las Vegas. How was it like being just focused on your family instead of just like in the fight game 100 percent? Yeah, I mean, I got to I mean, I got to watch fights every Saturday. 
um, be with my family, finally settled him in, had a baby boy that kind of, um, this is, I, I didn't get to really spend that first, I, um, or really enjoy the months, uh, the, the first couple of months, just because it was, it was hectic. I mean, I went home in, I went home in like first week of September. I was, um, my wife is ready to give birth, could have gave birth while I was gone. And then, um, she ended up giving birth early October. And then we, I was home for a month and then I came back out here, you know, I was like, shoot, we're supposed to fight in December, whatever. I forget what card it was. I think it was the one that the Kevin Holland fight that the main event, um, got switched or whatever that one of his first main events that he got switched um i was supposed to fight on that card and then it just like there was no opponent and nothing um but all the while i'm trying to move my family and then like ah uh, boom they call me oh jonathan pierce somebody um sean woodson put it on the yeah let's do it um so i was supposed to fight like mid-december and then it reversed like seven days okay let's fight next week sat next week saturday i mean i don't regret it at all but um, it was just life lessons to her, like, okay, slow it down a bit. You know what I mean? We don't have to do that. We're here already. Um, let's do it, the, like, do it the right way. Let's get a fair shot like everybody else is, you know? Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, having everything situated in your personal life is going to be better for you in your fight life, right? It translates over. Yes, I mean, especially at the highest level. You know what I mean? Like, um, I mean, you, you, the stress level. I mean, you don't think about that when you're on the fly. Uh, just trying to get to the UFC, you know what I mean? But I mean, we're professional athletes now. We're in, we're we're in the NFL of uh, mixed martial arts. So definitely, definitely. Now, um, you know, you mentioned some some changes, some alterations to your training or training camp. Can you get into that right now? Um, I mean, like just just the new coaches. You know, I got um Eric Nixick, um Jimmy Gifford, and the Ray Seffo. Um, working with Renato Canuto uh, and a little bit with Jake Shields too. So, I mean, just ha having th these guys on top of where they got me here from the, from what the, the training that me, my cousin, um, my family has kind of brought us to, just adding on a new set of eyes from different angles, I feel like I've elevated, like, um, Ten folds on. I mean, just just my eyes are just way better um, in every situation. Now, working with them, you mentioned your eyes being better. What else have you noticed? You know that you're getting better at in this time because it's been six months. If you once you step into that cage again, it's six months of time. That's a lot. Um, sure. I mean, there's there's a lot that I mean. I'm thinking about the hours that I sleep. I mean, just the P the UFC PI. Um, they're really critical on that they're watching like stress levels um um there's a lot i mean even the nutrition i'm at a good spot in in my physically you know and everything is everything is coming together as far as uh, being a full complete mixed martial artist and an athlete um i think that's i'm just elevating as an athlete in general i mean what got me here was just hunger and now it's i mean you're adding on the science and then you're adding on just a different set of eyes um um skill wise i mean it's just they're just adding you know um the odd so i mean it's 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 crazy i mean i've never um i never thought i'd be in this spot um as far as as far with the coaches that i have and being able to elevate more you know um yeah it's just it's it's weird and my coaches see it um, my coach, you see, and, and it feels good to know that these guys, these guys see it, that how, how much they've gotten better since I've been here. Is there, is there a particular reason why there's so many Hawaiians at Extreme Couture? Um, I mean, well, I mean, Hawaiians are really, you know, really close, really, um, family oriented. So that's, that's one itself. And then, um, we just have guys, we have like, we, 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 we idolize a lot of these guys. Brad Tavares, um, you know, who's been in the been in the UFC. Him alone, he's been in the UFC for like 13 years or 10 plus 10 plus years. And then being in Vegas, I mean, it, it's like the ninth island, and you know, there's the food isn't far from home. And it really is. The food is, isn't far from home. I, I could be driving at any time of the day, and I might see like a car with a Hawaiian Island sticker on it or something that resembles home. 
So it just you you feel a little bit or a lot more comfortable being here. Um, yeah, I mean they have like Hawaiian radio stations, you know. So it feel I mean you feel at home, and then you then you have all of us here that that are already that's like um, merging here um, with the same goal, I and mean, it just makes it a lot easier. All right. Well, May first, you know, you're taking on T.J. Brown. What is your breakdown of him and uh, the style of fighting that he brings? Um, honestly, like I mean, I tell you this every time. Like, I, I don't. I'm really not thinking about T.J. Brown. I mean, there's bits and pieces that I hear, and you know, uh, that I was shown as far as like fight, fight, um, fight tape. But I mean, if I like, he's not gonna be able to like same. I I can't see only him because. I'm getting better as well. So if he's thinking he's going to fight that last guy that fought Jonathan Pierce, um, he's got it all wrong. Um, so, I mean, I expect him to be, has gotten way better as well. Um, so, I mean, it's just, we're going to get in there and it's going to be a chess match. I mean, I've seen some things of him. He's probably seen things of me. But, I mean, he's gotten way better. I've gotten way better. If, if he didn't, then, I mean, he wasted a lot. He just wasted like eight months of his life, you know. Um, so, I mean, I... I I can't really judge on what he's, um, what I've already seen because I mean there's some tendencies, but I mean as far as the game and the way I've I'm improving, um, I'm not proving improving for just TJ Brown. I'm improving for the the next guy, the next guy. You know, so I'm trying to be better to where I, I I'm able to face all type of styles. Now Brown, he's winless in the UFC. You know, and and if he loses, he could be on the chopping block. You know what kind of effect do you think that has on a, on a fighter? Um, I mean, shoot, I don't know because I feel the same way right now. You know, might just lost. Um, so I mean, he, I, I I suspect he's gonna come out guns blazing. I mean, which, I mean, let's let's do it. You know, like that's exactly what I want. Um, I want you to fight hard, and and yeah, I mean, so I mean, if he does that, he, he falls right into. Um, puts me right at home. I mean, so I, I, I'm, I'm assuming he's think it's in the back of his mind. But I mean, once he get in, gets in there, I mean, it's gonna go get out the door. Now you mentioned all the coaches. Now who have been the guys that have been helping you? You know, training partner wise, the most for this camp. Um, I mean, we got all the all the Hawaiians. I mean, just I mean, you you know a bunch of the Hawaiians, um, but. My boy Boston Salmon, um, Danny Gates has, has always been a big part. But as far as guys that are like other guys, Patchy Mix, Mads Brunel, those are my, and Jeremy Kennedy, those are like the three other guys that I've, I've been working with. Um, and we're going like all back to back fighting soon. So, um, yeah, th those, those three names, those other 45ers, those have been, those guys have been helping me out. Yeah, big fights coming up for everybody. Man, Dan's getting the Korean zombie fight. I'm so happy for Korean, him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, freaking, he's, he was helping me out until the ending of his camp. And then um, from there, me and Mads, Jeremy Kennedy, um, Patchy, were, were all, like, right next to each other in weeks. I mean, Mads, or Jeremy fights this week. Mads fights next week. I fight on the first. Mm. Uh, Patchy fights on the seventh. So, I mean... It's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Definitely. Now I saw you you took a trip out to Ruka a while back. Like who did you train with? You know, how was the training over there? Oh, it was good. I I I trained with my boxing coach from home, Carlos Tangaro. Um we're we're both under Ruka and then um I got to move around with um Chido Vera a little bit and then um Hafa Garcia on one morning. So it was pretty good. I was there for like three, four days, but only one day we kinda we kind of worked. Oh, and B and BJ, of course. Um, we we worked with each other like most of the time that we were there. Do you think BJ's gonna come back? No, I I mean I hope not. He's got some other things that he has to deal with, and I would I would like him um, as like a as like a somebody who idolizes him and and like a nephew to him. I would like him to you know just take a back seat and just be more of a mentor already. Um, I, that's that's the approach I would like him to take. Yeah, I think he would be a really good mentor. He's been through yeah. everything. Yeah, and that's why you know he, um, we we talk on a day like I mean a weekly basis. 
um, just to let him know that you know um, I look up I look up to him and um, you know and and I, I always want to be around him. He was in Vegas um, a few times after I went out to Ruka and we were talking and stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would like him to take a back seat and just kind of be a coach or be and be be a mentor have have a have a uh, different role in mixed martial arts or in just martial arts in general definitely now you know all the training all the switches how do you see yourself getting back in that win column um like i always do i'm right in tj brown's face meet him in the middle just i just got a little bit more different tricks now um so i mean that that's that's it i mean I, I don't i don't see i don't see how i lose i mean the only way is, i i mean of course he doesn't see how he loses as well but i just i've gotten so much better and i'm i'm in a bit better spot mentally my um as a man um and a, as an athlete and as a mixed martial artist you know i'm i'm here with my family my three kids and my wife living living in our own place um training at one of the best gyms in the world um, with the science of the UFC PI behind me and just the athletes that I'm around working with, I feel like um, I feel unstoppable right now, you know? I mean, I'm sure he does too, but I just, so, I mean, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, collision course, man. And uh, let's switch gears, man. I wanted to, you know, talk about another aspect of fighting, which is the odds. Do you ever look at odds for a fight? No, I, um... Not really. I mean, I only hear like when I hear stuff, but um, yeah, that's it. I I, I don't. I I I've heard the last time. I don't believe odds. I mean, you shouldn't believe odds. I was a minus four hundred at three something against T JSP, and you know they I, I didn't get it right. I didn't prove them right. So, and I don't. Re I don't even know. I don't know. Do you ever throw money on fights or do you? play like do you gamble on sports ever um i might do like some parlays every now and then but um i try not i stay away from it when like i got buddies on the card mm -hmm. just because it gets a little bit too like I, yeah i just don't want yeah i don't know i don't want that bad juju oh definitely definitely yeah, yeah i understand what you're saying now what is the biggest payday you know i mean like you throw five or ten bucks you know I mean, it's not a big deal but have you had a big payday before in the past i think like maybe once was like 800 i think wow but, I mean, but that's, I mean, yeah, I, I once, I, I would think I won that much, but that's it. Who was it? Shoot, I forget. It was when I was in, like, early in my pro career. Mm. Um, but, yeah, just parlays are a little bit more fun, you know. Yeah. So, Especially, in, you live in Vegas, so it's like the gambling capital of the world. You know what I mean? You're yeah, there. I mean, it's over well, here. I was do, doing parlays when, like, I was at home, like, mm -hmm. online, um, those betting sports books. But here, I'm not, I don't like to go to the casino. So, I mean, anybody says it's hard to move to Vegas, I mean, you're just weak-minded because I probably went to the casino, casino and put money in the machine maybe once when I was, since I was here. And I don't even think it was probably my own money just because I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I don't have no um, niche for that. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so I mean, it's not hard to live in Vegas and not just weak minded. I, I barely go to the strip. I probably went to the strip like I just drive, take my kids, see the lights. That's about it. <laughs> For sure. Well, man, you're back in the cage May 1st, UFC Fight Night in Las Vegas, right down the road, probably from your home. It must feel I good. I hope so. hope so. I hope they're not playing no last minute um, trickeries on us. Oh, that's, yeah, that's possible too. You never know. They might do it in North Dakota or something. Who knows? But hopefully or, not. I mean, they want fans and yeah. whatever, and then they move us to some place. I mean, I hope not. I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited just for the month of April. I mean, there's so many good fights. You know, like a bunch of my teammates. My brother's making his pro debut next week, Friday, for LFA. Okay. Um, and then the night I'll be cutting weight. My cousin Ray Cooper is back. Um, so I mean, I'm excited. That'll be the probably the, he'll probably make it the easiest weight cut ever because. I'll have so much energy watching him. He won't be here in Vegas this time, but I mean, he'll definitely help with my weight cut. All right, for sure, man. Well, good luck to everybody and good luck to you, man. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you.